Hi there everyone and welcome to the Novel Novel Strip Show where I discuss books and comics. Um, what I'm doing today is the second part of my October 2018 wrap up um, and this is discussing um, Strange the Dreamer and its sequel Muse of Nightmares. So the series is just a duology um, and this is part two of the review. So I have done part one. If you haven't seen it, please go and watch that. Um, and in it, I recommend knowing very little when you go into reading the book. Um, so what I'll do in this review is um, give some kind of medium spoilers. So I'll discuss general themes um, and go into a bit more detail. So if you haven't read the book and you do feel after watching my first review that you want a bit more information and you want to know a bit more of what the book's about, um, but you don't want specific plot spoilers, um, then you can go ahead and watch this part. Um, I'm not sure if I'll make it into a third video or if I'll carry on in this video with more major spoilers and questions that I have about the book. Um, but if that's the case, then I'll give a, a warning so you can just stop listening then. So, yeah, please go and w uh, watch the first review first. I will link it um, as a card just now. And, yeah, we'll just go straight on um, with, uh, yeah, carry on on the review. Um, so one thing that I noted in the first part of my review is that um, the series draws... A could you one could draw a lot of parallels with other YA series um so for example um you could draw parallels with Harry Potter in that um strange is a normal boy seemingly he's um an orphan um he is surrounded by people who don't necessarily care about him or understand him and then he finds out that he's special um, so yeah, that very much evoked uh, parallels with Harry Potter. Um, you could also compare it to uh, Miss Peregrine. Um, so there are young adults um, who have powers um, and they end up traveling through different different worlds, different times. I mean, in, well, in Miss Peregrine, it's, it's times. Here it's more different worlds, but in Miss Peregrine, it may as well be different worlds anyway. Um, so yeah, there's that that parallel there. Um, and in the way that the characters interact with each other, that reminded me of Miss Peregrine as well. Um, one of the other features could be paralleled with his dark materials. So there's um, the notion of, of killing gods, um, also traveling through through portals as well. That's a bit like the subtle knife. Um, but yeah, this, this notion of, of um, killing gods um, you could draw parallels with his dark materials there, and it made me think about that quite a bit. Um, however, I enjoyed the series a lot more than his dark materials because it lacks the sort of religious commentary. Um, there's no sort of church or anything like that. Um, and yeah, this kind of really uh, explores where these gods came from. Um, and um, there, there's a bit of ambiguity there um, as to um, are they gods, aren't they gods? Um, but yeah, you find out where they came from and their kind of history there, which I really liked because um, I think for me anyway, that was quite original. Um, I when I've read other fan a lot of other fantasy series, but particularly YA, um, it's always been very much these are gods. They just are. They've just always existed, um, and there's no sort of real exploration of of where they came from um so yeah i really really liked that um another feature uh, which is quite prevalent is romance within the novel um so in the first book i actually really liked it because um i just felt like these two characters they they meet in dreams um and normally obviously in dreams you don't have anyone else there you're just alone anyone else who is there as part of the dream etc but they realize um that they can see each other and that, that they can interact with each other and they kind of feel an immediate connection um now personally i'm absolutely fine with that especially one of the characters um well kind of both of them i guess they've not really ever had any friends they've had very little contact um so to kind of have this experience of someone being in your dreams you know you often talk about your romantic partner being the man or woman of your dreams um w when they meet in a dream and they they have a connection that's very clearly more than that of just an apparition in a dream 
um i'm absolutely fine with that in general i'm i'm really not a fan of of romance in books or series um but and i um when i first found out about the book it was through kitty g as i mentioned in my first video and she mentioned that she feels like the romance lets the book down um, because it's very much insta love um and reading it i i I didn't feel that. I felt there was definitely an instant connection there um, from the very first meeting. Um, but at no point in the first book um, do they say, I love you or anything like that. It's clear that they have a connection. Um, but it doesn't seem to be anything more than that. Um, so, uh, yeah, I was absolutely fine with it there because there's there's been plenty of people, some of my best friends today, um, in fact, potentially all of them, from the first moment that I met them, I felt like there was a connection there. We've only ever been friends, um, and there was no romantic involvement at all, but definitely there was that, that kind of spark there. So if it had been left at that, I would have been absolutely fine. Um, however, it does develop into very much a full YA romance um, in the second novel. They do declare their love for, me, for each other, um, and that kind of, to be honest, it felt, I haven't read it, but it felt like I could have been reading something like twilight um so i let it down slightly um but yeah especially in the first book i think it's done fine um because obviously these characters given the circumstances they're not going to be able to date normally or anything for um this connection to form in an organic manner um but yeah by by the second book the i love you kind of is is very very um quick um, I think in terms of medium spoilers, there's not really too much more that I can go into, um, without giving too much more away. Um, so what I'll do is I'll go on to a part three now. Um, if you, uh, do go and read the book, um, then watch part three and hopefully you'll be able to help me answer some of the questions I've got left over, some of the, the kind of downsides, things that I'm not too sure about. Um, which I'll discuss with spoilers in part three. So if you haven't read the book, um, please don't watch part three yet. Um, and as always, thanks for watching.